Live from the Sands Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at AWS reInvent 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsors, Amazon and Trend Micro. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live at reInvent in Las Vegas. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Jeff Kelly, and our next guest is Bryce DeKohler, who's the EVP, CTO, and CIO of the Weather Channel. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much, glad we, to be here. We appreciate it. Obviously, Weather Channel's known by all geeks and anyone interested in weather, especially when the tornadoes hit. Yep. I love turning the snowstorms and blizzards. Even though I live in California, I relive all the uh, East Coast action, especially those nor'easters, my favorite. Um, but welcome to theCUBE, I know you're super busy. Um, big data and analytics, visualization, this is your yeah. business. I mean, you're living this. We are. Um, give us a background on what you guys are doing uh, that's cutting edge right now, it's a little history, right. and a little bit about the Weather Channel operations. Sure. So, the weather company actually, which uh, is the, the, the parent company for all of our operations. The Weather Channel, obviously our TV business, uh, most distributed cable network in the US, great, you know, great outfit, um, really unique in the data localization we do. Uh, people love the Weather Channel. Um, the rest of our business, weather.com, Weather Underground, uh, our big API platform that powers uh, you know, mobile apps uh, on almost you know, a billion devices um, around the world iOS 8 being the default widget on Apple devices, uh, any Android uh, uh, device that has Google Now enabled, yeah. 170 million downloads of our own apps, uh, our B2B platform which powers you know, 48 of the top 100 airlines around the world. Uh, our, our, we're the number one energy and insurance forecasting company. Uh, we're in over 500 uh, broadcast, local broadcast TV stations. So we we are all about taking weather data and finding ways to visualize it and create. Was that the big master plan? Because you know, I watched the MLB and I was involved in some of the early days of MLB when it spun out to the BAM uh, media unit. It was like, just get, get the apparel on there, get the website going. But really, you see what they've done at the scale. They are now the definitive they are. platform. So you guys are the definitive platform for weather. Stop data. Yeah, MLB, they, they, they've got now businesses coming to them and they're running streams and doing things that have nothing to do with baseball. Yeah, and so, so you guys are in the same boat with weather data. I mean, GE, for instance, uses weather data yeah. to look at all kinds of risk management around how they look at their power stations and... Absolutely. I mean, it's... it's, it's weather awful. impacts over a third of the GDP around the world every day. And so the beauty of weather is that there is nothing that isn't impacted by it at some point along you know, a journey, whether it's a person or a business. Yeah, or sales, I mean, it's you know, totally. umbrella sales are hot when so it's the weather, raining. So the Weather yeah. Channel started in 1982, and yeah, the evolution of the business now becoming a big data technology business, um, really helping understand the intersection of consumer behavior and weather. You know, weather was the original big data problem. The, the first computer program on an ENIAC was 25,000 punch cards, and it, it was a weather forecasting model. And ever since then, computer scientists and atmospheric yeah. scientists have been coming together to figure out how to make a better, better mm -hmm. forecast. So it's safe to say that that whole notion of being a platform and serving other businesses is clearly what you guys are doing. That's totally at the core of our business. Okay, got it. The okay. weather platform. So talk a little bit about how some of the, the infrastructure, the technology you're using to, to support all of this data and, and the analytics and then you know, getting that data out to your different uh, customers, service customers. How do you actually support all that? Um, so we've gone through a massive transformation over the last several years as we've really transformed ourselves from being kind of a, a, a TV, cable TV, you know, media business mm -hmm. into what is really one of the leading big data technology uh, organizations. Um, that transformation started with a pretty deep hole, technically speaking, mm -hmm. and we've had to dig out of it to be able to build a platform that would enable us to, to grow and do all of the products and services that we've been talking about. Um, we chose AWS as you know, our core partner uh, for providing that. I didn't want to run 13 data centers. It's not the business <laughs> I wanted to be in. Um, You're in the weather business. Not I want to be in the weather business, I want to be in the atmospheric science business, and I want to be at the intersection of consumer behavior and weather. And I want to help consumers and businesses make better decisions based upon the weather. Um, and so choosing the right tools, clearly Amazon, uh, web services provides a suite of tools that we can leverage, whether it's you know, load balances, lo load balancing, storage, uh, compute, redshift, 
uh, workspaces, I mean, you name it, mm -hmm. we are consuming it and using it as parts of our business. Bryson, how's that changed your job? I mean, let's just, let's just go back to reality yeah. where it was 10 years ago. So, I mean, because that's awesome. You just want to be in that business, it's your business, data center's off your, well, not off your plate, but not yet. if it wasn't off your plate, right, what would your life be like? Would you be in meetings like discussing power bills and... Uh, Generator replacement, uh, I mean, why, why there was water in the generator, you know, gas tank, you know, why the UPS room had a leak in it, you know, you would be stuck in exciting those Exciting stuff for you, right? That's exciting not Exciting yeah, stuff, yeah. right. <laughs> um, Look, as a geek, I love data centers. Data centers are cool, you can't, you get a vibe walking through a data center, but that's not our business. And I wasn't hired and I, I don't get paid to do that. I get paid to build technology that enables our business and our product teams, our business teams, to go out and create new revenue opportunities for the company. And that for us is a big data platform. It's the ability to ingest, store, process, and distribute vast amounts of weather data the right. world's best and most accurate forecast, and then you can build yeah. businesses on top of that. Well, talk about that, the, the agility that AWS provides you in terms of being, very, being able to attack new opportunities when they arise right. uh, versus maybe a more traditional approach and how, how much more difficult that might be. Because of course, with big data and analytics, it's not about building, you know, finding some insights, trying to operationalize those, and then you wipe your hands of it. It's always, you've always got to iterate and continue to find new ways to use that data. How does Absolutely. AWS help you do that? Maybe ways you so, couldn't otherwise. So just take the weather forecast. We're the world's most accurate forecaster. Uh, we get graded every month. Um, and you know, to continue to maintain that lead and to continue to be the world's most accurate requires constant innovation. New data types are constantly evolving. <laughs> the Internet of Things is providing new data types for us to be able to ingest and bring into our forecast. We have to stay on top of that if we want to continue to have the world's most accurate data set for weather. And Amazon Web Services allows me to focus in on those innovations around the algorithmic science of understanding these data sets and how they equate to a better forecast and allows me to not focus in on racking and stacking servers yeah. and running cables and you know, deploying all of the normal things. And so I can take my engineering talent and shift it to building these great platforms mm -hmm. and doing things that are scientifically advancing the company forward um, and not doing things that are kind of commodity table stakes. What have you guys done on this, be specific on your investment, so that you got a lot of burden off your shoulders, now you're investing in some of these algorithms and science and apps. What are you guys building, what's your new cutting edge, bleeding edge area you're investing in to move We have that a product forward. called WeatherFX, and WeatherFX is a real-time decisioning engine that helps businesses understand how their, how their customers are influenced by the weather. So if you were to take 10 years of historical weather data and 10 years of point of sale data and mash them together and look at what was the impact of weather last weekend in Chicago on beer sales, so that you could help an advertiser understand where's a good place to spend money and where are you not going to be yeah. able to change consumer behavior because weather was overpowering. Weather's like the most primal yeah. decision maker. So WeatherFX is our real-time targeting engine. So do you have that. companies that build on top of that, like the stats application that MLB has, like don't slide into first base, the, the numbers are all there. You guys must have similar companies you're working with saying, here, here's the data. Absolutely, so we, sometimes we provide the raw data, sometimes we provide a tool or an application. Um, it depends, so the airline uh, industry, we work differently than the insurance industry, we work differently than the, in the energy trading industry. Um, there are different needs. Sometimes people just want raw data, and sometimes people want a system around them that can kind of tell them exactly what they need and to do. And you sell the data too, obviously, yeah. you must get the right. data to set the We sale. have a very large data API built on AWS, mm -hmm. uh, handles somewhere between 100 and 150,000 transactions a second, um, with over 100,000 developers around the world that build applications on top of this data API platform. So, we absolutely right. sell the world's best So what's data. the coolest thing you've seen here? Obviously you're up you're on the big stage with all the mucky mucks up there, you know, pressing palms, going to all the big parties, VIP. What's the coolest thing you've seen here? You go, you know what, this is awesome. This is badass stuff, I love this, I love that. What's your top three favorite things here that you're jazzed about? My number one thing is the culture. This event, reInvent is just an amazing group of people. Because you have folks, whether you're a startup, or you're a Fortune 50 company and everybody in between here with a lot of very common desires around change and transformation and agility and speed. 
and kind of blowing up the old and creating the new. And it's just fun to get that kind of a group together because you get these awesome conversations. And clearly, you know, around us here on the, the trade show floor, there's amazing startups that are doing yeah. great things with data it's analytics. It's so democratizing, it really is, it is. so awesome. So I, I, look, to me, there's the nothing VCs, better than the culture that is created at reInvent. All the Silicon Valley VCs that's around from are all here. They're all like, not, they're not even like advertising. No one's tweeting, hey man, it's not a, not a marketing show. They're like, they're doing deals. And there's some Absolutely. serious business being done there. Um, Okay, we got a break. Thanks for taking the time. I want to get your perspective. What's, what's your vision for a weather company? You know, you got the keys to the kingdom, you got the shackles off your ankles, you got the creativity juices flow, and you got to have some fun really building some innovation into your, into your, into your plan. What's out on the horizon for you? What do you, what do you see evolving? Where do you see this going for you, for you and your, your uh, company? Uh, I'm really excited about the internet of things. I'm really excited about crowdsourcing of vast amounts of data because we want to improve the forecast and keep people safer and help people make better decisions for themselves and for their family. And the, the vast amount of influx of new data types over the coming years is really going to transform how we do forecasting. And so my vision is we have a open data platform that enables us to capture all of this rich information in the spirit of making a better forecast yeah. to keep people safer, um, and that we do that across the globe better yeah. than anybody else. You know, I got to say, I really applaud you with the Weather Underground bringing that into the fold because that really teased out the, the whole contribution, open source ethos. 35,000 personal weather stations. I mean, I use that. I've got one, do you have one? No, mm -hmm. I don't. Yeah. I have too many kids we'll to take, take care of. We'll no, take but care. I live in California, microclimate, huge issue. So Absolutely. like, it could be different. In Fisherman's Bay. Wharf and Knob Hill are very different places. So I go right to those stations, man. So, but you guys have a great business model and it's really going to help society and businesses all across the world. Yeah. So, uh, congratulations. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. We are here getting all the weather data uh, in technology, sharing that with you here inside theCUBE. Uh, I'm John Furrier with uh, Jeff Kelly. We'll be right back with our next guest right after this short break.